Thank you, Michelle, for making time for us today. Um, Michelle's, uh, I'm going to have to say this again because I didn't, <laughs> I, hit, I didn't, forgot to, in my excitement, forgot to hit the record button. So Michelle's an adopted mum. She's also um, uh, a, a, an expert in publishing. She's done a, uh, you've done a, you've done a, a TEDx. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're going to be talking how adoptees can sell more, sell more books. Yeah. Um, so I guess we it is I guess the thing that I'm thinking about is it's all going to be social, right? Is it is it all about social media? I mean, it's not all about social, but we're going to talk about social. <clears throat> um, I actually got my start uh, blogging about foster adoption issues and wrote a book about it, and that was 25 years ago and morphed it morphed into this full-fledged publishing business where I actually it's interesting Simon even though I don't really go out there and talk a lot about how I'm involved in the adoption triad like I'm, a, I'm I adopted my daughter so I come from a different perspective but it's like half of my clients that I know about, like we don't always talk about it, but half my clients at some point or another will, will share an experience about how they're somehow involved in an adoption triad. It's, it's amazing how energetically we kind of gravitate to each other. So I yeah. went off script a little there, but I'm yeah. pleased to be here. Thank you so much. And I would love to talk about social, but not just social. I want to talk a little bit too about how when you write your book, um, you're suddenly putting your story out there for most people, right? And that's not an easy thing. It wasn't an easy thing for me. And I had someone read my book recently and I wrote it. Um, well, my daughter wouldn't be... So my first book was 25 years ago. My adoption book was not 25 years ago because she's only 19. 19 yeah. Let me backtrack a little bit there, get my own math right. My adoption book was about 17 years ago. And when I go, I had someone read it recently and I just want to, I want to shrink, right? It's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said all that. I changed the names. I changed my all the foster kids' names. I changed my daughter's name and all that. Um, and I, I stopped the book at the point where I adopted her. And so her personal story isn't really in there very much. But, you know, all of us, when we put our stuff out there for anyone to read, especially years later, it it's re-triggering. It's re, I don't want to say traumatizing because we don't have to look at our stories that way, but there's always this stuff inside that it brings up. And so someone read this book that I'd written like 15 or 17 years ago. And I went, <gasps> and I, you know, even I who know better, who like coach and publish and 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 talk about these issues all the time, even I kind of shrunk. And so, you know, raise your hand if you all also have those kinds of issues. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I put all my dirty laundry out for the whole world to see and read, even if it's not dirty laundry, right? It, and I, that's a cool thing. So I have no idea how David, how old David is there, but um, many of us here are probably a little tiny bit older. And, you know, boomers are like, I'm a boomer. Keep your mouth shut. You don't put your dirty laundry out there. My daughter, who's Gen Z, is like, it's all out there, you know, there's no secrets. It's all out there. We talk about anything. Um, she talks about everything with her boyfriend. It's like, it's all out there, right? Yeah. So I think there's also a generational difference. Yeah. Um, I've started my book four or five times now. Yeah. And uh, and I've got to 10 or 12,000 words and I've never got, uh, and I've not been happy with the structure or I haven't realized, I haven't been clear about how, how I, uh, who it's for. Um, and, uh, and and then I realized that actually I far prefer talking to writing. Yeah. I, you know, someone put a comment on today on Facebook saying he sure like me creates a lot of content and well, yeah, because I love talking to other adoptees and I, I'm, I'm full bore at this. People say, 
are you retired, Simon? Somebody said, are you retired? Are you joking? Like, <laughs> um, the, the thing that came into my mind as you talked about shrinking, uh, Michelle, was this, we hear these phrases banded around and they're absolute BS, right? This thing of like getting in our own way, right? We get, so we've created, we've written this book and we're getting in our own way. Well, there's only one of us, right? There's only one of us. We can't actually get in our own way. You, ca you can't do that. What, what's going on is um, uh, some, sort of, some sort of belief, some kind of, maybe it's the retriggering stuff that you've talked about, but some kind of belief. There's a, there's a self-limiting belief there that's popped up and it's saying, I shouldn't go out there in the world and, and tell people about my, uh, tell people about my book or I can't do this or it, it, it's, it, it is a belief. It's not us getting in a way. It's it's some part of conditioning that we've picked up. Maybe as you say, like from the um, the, uh, the the boomer generation, we don't do this stuff. Like right. um, Prince Harry is Prince Harry was kind of doing okay, I think, and everybody was blaming Meghan, and now he's done his autobiography and and he's oversharing in many British people's opinion. Right, that's what right. the newspapers say. Uh, so he is now, you know, well, he's he's now become Americanized. Why is he why is he airing his dirty laundry in in public? And some people, a, a few people are, are, uh, that were on the fence, I think, are going are, are backing out. So he's taking more of the flat now. Um, right. But you were saying um, uh, you, you were saying that uh, be before we before the rest of the uh, guests joined us, before the rest of the listeners joined us. Um, that the readers want to hear right stories right so the other part of this is when you shrink and it could so here's the thing I did a TEDx talk and we talked about this about procrastination like who, who really cares like we all do it and, um, and I got hate mail around that right? I got hate mail around. And so then it's like, if I can get hate mail around that, what kind of hate mail is possible that I might get around adoption issues or, right? And, and so it's not just us getting in our own way or limiting beliefs and it's conditioning. It's about the feedback that we get from the world and how do we respond to the feedback? So I got real feedback it was hate mail around this TED talk, which, and then it's like, how do I choose to respond to this hate mail, right? So when we're in something that is um, more intimate, um, more exposing, like adoption issues, right? Very personal, then of course there's going to be some fear or some trepidation or even excitement, but all of that that you're putting out into the world, as soon as you get some feedback, if it's feedback that you weren't really wanting, you're going to respond automatically to that, right? And so the, the, the problem I see, it's kind of a weird word, but the problem I see with that, especially even in my own instance, like with the TED Talk, is then I shrink because that's the feedback I got. And then I have to work on being brave again to go back out there. And so we really do, especially in today's day and age with social, have to protect our own energy and our boundaries. And what are we going to read? And are we going to read the trolls and just share our story? We were talking about this too, when people were just starting to come on, no matter who comes on this and who listens to this later, I trust that the right people We'll get whatever they need to get from our conversation, Simon, right? So when you're sharing your story, you have to share with an open heart, without fear, without trepidation, without expecting or wanting any kind of feedback from the outside world, because whatever the feedback is, is just external feedback, and it's not really valuable to your own personal journey and what you have to share with the world. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, a couple of years ago, three years ago, I think I was running some events for uh, parents and, and, and kids in, in a, so this was, you know, must be four years ago, it was well before, before COVID, I was running events, parents and kids came to uh, like a, 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 a meeting room um, and uh, I did some 
I, I did some work with the with the parents and the kids about building their kids' confidence, right? So that was about, and I shared this free event on Facebook, and somebody put underneath the comment put pedo, short for pedophile. I was running an event where parents and kids come, and it's just absolutely nuts. But if we and like I thought, well, what can be going on for that guy? You know, um, it stung. And then I thought, well, there must be something really, really weird going on for for for, for that guy. You know, um, and if we we've got to do the stuff anyway, right? Um, we got to do it anyway. And and um, I had a big breakthrough on this sort of subject. You know, this quality versus quantity of impact before Christmas uh, and I was chatting to an Aussie adoptee called Vin and I was saying well um, uh, Hayley Radke who's, who runs the um, adoptees on uh, podcast is, she's been going six years she's had a million downloads I think at that time I had th in the 30,000s and he said uh, Vin said do not confuse the quality of your impact with the quantity of anybody's impact. And that was like, my mentor's been trying to say that, get me to that message for 10 years, right? For the penny to drop, that if it's just one person, and I was saying to uh, Michelle before we, uh, before we started recording, I had a, a, a guy, uh, there's a, a mix, something came up in my um, Calendly this week, um, and I thought, where's that guy come from? I don't know. And it was literally a listener, from, uh, a adoptee, um, who had found the podcast and was was wanted to to say that he'd he'd enjoyed what he'd heard and he was listening to lots of different episodes. He was enjoying what he was hearing from the guests, and that was just one guy. And I just thought, well, if it if it is, if it is just it is all about quality. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Quality is so much more important than, than quantity in this area. So I want to take this and finish kind of your comment about how this relates to social, right? And how you can actually promote your books. Because this is, we are going to talk about promoting books here. And what I would invite everyone, whether you have a book, a podcast, a blog, whatever it is, you're on this webinar because you have something to promote. You have a message, you have some inspiration, you have something that you want to share with the world. So I'm going to talk in terms of book, but this relates to anything. You got to really understand who you're talking to. And we're going back to sort of business 101 here. Who's your audience? Who's your reader? Who's your message for? It's not everybody, it's not. You have something specific and unique inside of you that makes your story different that will energetically pull in that same vibration, right? I know I'm sounding kind of woo-woo, but you guys get it. It is about, like I, my, I can talk to anybody, but when I'm publishing books, my sweet spot are women over 50 who have had some kind of trauma or something in their life. That is most women over 50. But right, but some people are some people are have had bigger things happen than other people, right? Or more traumatized, however you want to, whatever words you want to use. I can talk to anybody, but that's my sweet spot. So where's your guys' sweet spot? Where is it that you really want to share your message? And who do you share your message to? And if you're a counselor, do you work with teens or adoptive moms or um, people, you know, where in the adoption triad do you fit? Um, is there an age? Is there a gender? Because when you dial into that and you're really clear about who your perspective reader is and your listener and your audience is, and you focus there on social, you will have a bigger impact. You, because you are empathizing and you understand that person, maybe because you've been there or you have case studies or clients who've been there, you're gonna have a bigger impact. 
And then you can dial in and do all your marketing to those people, to those prospective readers. So when we're looking to promote books, let's pretend your book's already published. Today, you're not changing the cover, changing the title. Those are all things I look at when I look at why is a book not selling? We look at cover, title, metadata, keywords, all the back end technical things. But let's pretend for a minute you're not going to change any of that today. What you can change are keywords, titles, posts, and, and images that speak directly to who you want to talk to, rather than some generic goldfish jumping out of a bowl saying, you too can do it, or some uh, generic person climbing the mountain saying, I climbed the mountain. Get really specific in your social about who you're speaking to and the takeaway you want them to have and what they're going to resonate with. Does that make sense? Um, you'll have less trolls, less hate mail. You're all gonna, we're all going to get hate mail. It's just the way of the world. Um, my daughter, who I mentioned is 19, you know, she just is always blocking people. Oh, I just blocked them. I'm like, what? What do you mean you blocked them? You know, that's not something I did as a boomer, right? Um, she's like, oh, yeah, I just blocked them. They were trolling me. I'm like, okay, I can learn from this, right? You just block, block, block. It's a different kind of world out there now with social. Um, and so you will get hate mail. You will get troll, but it will be less if you're really dialed into who you're going to help, who you're here to serve. And you keep going back to that message. You keep going back to where's the one person out there that I can help. A hint that I give to... Um, when I train podcasting and when I train on writing books and all those kinds of things, take a picture of your ideal client, or even if it's someone famous, like one picture, whether it is a friend of yours or someone famous or a client you've had, and put it up in your writing space, your podcast space, and talk directly to that person every time, write directly to that person every time, and you will just stay dialed in to your particular audience. Yeah. Um, the, the, the big thing in the adoptee community and social is the, the, the Facebook groups, right? Yeah. That, they, are, they are huge. Um, and there's lots of them. Uh, they are, a, a, a lot of them are quite, dark there's not a lot of light there's not a lot a lot of light in there um it's main well uh, there's a lot of people kind of saying i feel like this right. does anybody else feel like that? so there's right. quite a lot of validation that kind of goes on so i mean what do we what, what what do we do? What, what what is it? What we should be? What should we be doing within those groups? I guess we need to pick. Uh, find maybe it. that's not your audience, right? So, I, I mean, I'm going to just flip it for a minute. I have a lot of people read my foster adoption book who have nothing, as far as I know, to do with the foster adoption triad. It's just it's just a story to them, but it's an interesting story, right? I mean, I read Michelle Obama's memoir and I'm not in politics, I'm not black. Like there's not immediate things that come to mind, right? Some people just like to read stuff. Um, we are not, so I published a book from a woman who um, broke her boyfriend out of prison. Some of you, well, in the U US you may know her, Toby Dorr. And she's big on, we are not our worst mistake, but we are also our, not our worst trauma or our trigger or our biggest event. That is not who we are. And I think no matter what we go through, we tend to self-identify that that's us. And so I'm not part of those adoption groups, but I've been part of other things where you get so immersed in that culture that that becomes your identity. And I'm always telling my daughter, adoption is just part of who you are. It's not your life, right? Yeah, you're always going to have 
that. That's always going to be part of who you are. You're always going to have questions. You're always going to maybe have a hole there. You're always going to have whatever. But that's just one piece of your life. Go have a good life, right? And so maybe the Facebook groups are not the place to promote your book. I mean, you can just promote your book on social. You can do podcasts. You can do Amazon ads. You can have your own YouTube channel. You can blog. Again, who is your audience? And are the people in those Facebook groups your audience? Can you bring light to people who may not want light or aren't ready to change? I know there's therapists and coaches in this group. I saw a couple of chats come up about um, therapists, right? You know more than anybody. You can't help people who aren't at the point where they're at that point where they're ready for the next step, right? So I don't know, I'm not part of those Facebook groups, but is that your audience? Or are you trying to bring a horse, make the horse drink the water, whatever that metaphor is, right? Well, yeah, I guess with, with where the, the, the name of the, the, the session is how, um, how adoptees can sell more, sell more books. And I, I'm just thinking that adoptees are gonna sell books to other adoptees. Why? Um, so let me ask you. Yeah, just right? so validation. If you are an adoptee and you're writing your story about, I'm going to make it up, finding your birth mother, is there a healing message in there that is useful to anyone who's had breaks with their mothers? Maybe. Maybe not in every book, right? I'm just taking an example. So maybe the audience is really, I went through this intense break with my mother. And if you've had any sort of trauma with your mother, maybe this book will also help you. That's one example, right? Maybe it's reconciling with siblings. Maybe it is, so I'm always telling my daughter, so we have, a lot of contact with her birth family. She has a very complicated family. So if she were to write a book, it might be something around, I've got a complicated family. I bet you do too, right? There, It doesn't have to be just for adoptees. And how many adoptees are there in, in the universe, in the world? And then how many are in those Facebook groups? I bet you anything, those Facebook groups are just a small portion. Yeah. The this, other thing this, this is why I got Michelle on, right? Because I don't, I, I have a publishing background, but it's in a completely different sector. And I don't know any, anything about this. I'm, I'm just making a big assumption that adoptees sell books to other adoptees or adoptees. Yeah, by... I don't think that's true. So if you've written a book, and I guess I'd love some comments on this. If you've written and published a book about adoption is it really about adoption or is it about a healing journey or is it an inspirational book what is the book really is it about adoption like here's my process of being adopted and what i had to work through or what what is the book really what genre is it really is it about a search for truth so i've uh I've, lis I've listened to a couple of audio books um, and read a few of, uh, of the people that have been on the show. And, uh, and the, they look like memoirs, but a, a lot of them have got more, a more inspirational. Yeah. Um, inspirational feel to them, but it, it's, it, it's self-help with a memoir. Right. The memoir look it looks like a memoir but right. it's actually it's got it's it's about an inspirational it's about an inspirational message or a, and it is about healing and it is about reunion and it is and that, so that's quite a lot of people write it or fractured souls or like there's so many different ways we could go right using my the example of the toby who broke her boyfriend out of prison right I haven't broken anybody out of prison, but I read her book, published her book, right? It does not have to be a match. I write, I read crime thrillers for fun. I have nothing to do with that. So um, expanding who you think your audience is, is the first step. Um, 
and really understanding what your book's about. You also made a really good point. And for anyone who is self-published, it's actually much easier to do this than you think. And that would be to really look at your cover and see if your cover fits with the genre. And the easiest way to do this is to go into Amazon, look, find the category where your book fits, not the category where you are, but the category where your book fits. Is it really inspirational memoir for women who had fractured relationships with mothers, right? And there's a category for that in Amazon somewhere. If that's where your book fits, then go look at other best-selling books in that category and see how your cover stacks up. Because at some point you've got to go into marketing with this. If you want to sell books, you do have to learn a little bit of marketing or find someone that can help you with this. Raising my hand. Um, because you want to make sure that your cover stacks up. If someone is looking for a book or is just scrolling through Amazon and looking at books in the genre, and there's two covers, is your cover clear and interesting to someone who does not know you? And if they're looking at two covers, which one would you pick? Yeah. The, the other thing that I see, um, because I Google everybody, you know, I, I Google people before I invite them to come on the podcast or, and I Google them again, right? I Google them again before, uh, before I they- Google myself, yeah. yeah. Um, and I look at where they are on Amazon, right? Um, and there's this thing called the Amazon author page. And right. a, a, lot of the, a lot of the authors that I talk to haven't, aren't using that author page to its full extent. So you see people that are, they put a load of blurb on there. They put a link to that. They put links to their socials. You can't actually put links in, right? But they put they put the they put the URL so that you can copy the copy the URL and, and put it into your browser bar. And they put a link to their website. They and you know and then they have um, you know we'll get onto that in a minute in the speaking in the speaking circles. If if you're looking to speaking, I think if you if you're just looking to sell a book, you don't need your own website or do you i don't know but if you need a if you want to be a professional speaker you you've got to have your own website but people don't make take full advantage of what they can do on that author page absolutely yeah and even if you have a publisher you still get your own author page so depending how you publish yeah there's there's a lot of free resources the amazon author page is one of them you've got to have a really good book cover You've got to have a really good title. You have to have good met metadata. That's all the keywords, the synopsis, the backend information. You have to have an author page. All of that's free, easy to change, easy to fix if it's wrong. Don't freak out. If your book's not that well-written, don't freak out. The cover matters more than how well-written the book is. I hate to say that, right? So it's like when you're in a wine, you're looking for wine, and sometimes you just pick, you know, a wine just because the labels, probably. you like the label. <laughs> yeah. Um, can, I, can I ask, um, what's your opinion on, um, by the way, uh, self-publishing and trying to go through a traditional publisher? Uh, I love is there... Question. Yeah, pros and I... cons and which, which um because right now I, I wrote a memoir and um I don't know my my first thought is going through a traditional publisher but yep. um I also thought about self-publishing yep so yeah what are your thoughts on that yeah so Simon can I jump on that yeah sure of course you yeah. all right and I'd love to know in the chat maybe you can watch the chat Simon how many people here have already published just so I get an idea so Megan, thanks for the question. Um, I'm just going by my experience in the US. I'm one person, I'm one publisher. You're gonna get, just like anything, just like asking someone about adoption, you'll get 20 different you know, answers. My experience, if you wanna go through a traditional publisher, you need a minimum of 20,000 followers on either an email list or social, engaged followers, not bot followers. Um, and then you submit a package to a traditional publisher. You have to have an agent to submit to one of the big five. It takes about two years from acceptance until your book is published. And then you get five to 7% royalties. 
So that's one way to publish. Most people don't have an email list or engaged social of 20,000 or more right. people. Some do, most don't. So for most authors that I work with, traditional big five is out of the question. Mm -hmm. Then it is, if you're gonna self-publish and do it correctly, you are gonna spend some money or if you're gonna go with a hybrid publisher, you are gonna spend some money. You need to have money or resources for high quality editing, a really good book cover, all the metadata. I did see that question, so I'll talk about that and how you're gonna market the book. You're gonna, you gotta go do review tours, podcast tours. You have to do some things to market the book. My example this month has been about Michelle Obama because she um, released her book like a year or 18 months ago. I don't even know now. And she's still out there promoting her book and she's with Simon and Schuster. You have to, as an author, whether you're with a big publisher, have self-published, a hybrid publisher, a medium publisher, authors have to promote their books to sell books. And so whether you go with someone like me, we charge for pub we charge for editing and services. We don't charge for publishing, but we charge to publish or self-publish. You're going to end up probably in the long run spending the same amount of money. So the question is, do you have resources to put out a high quality book or do you want to put out a lead gen? So we're going to talk about this in a minute. Something to bring people to a website, bring people to your coaching, bring people to your podcast. Are you using your book to share your message and your story? But your book is not the only way you're helping people. Maybe you have a coaching practice. Maybe you do public speaking like Simon's talking about. Maybe a podcast, uh, maybe an online course, maybe a, um, a retreat where you help other people work through whatever they're going through as part of adoption. And so you want to think about all these things, not to overwhelm you, but like, what is the real purpose of the book? I work with people who just, it's their passion project. They want to put out their book. They're going to put out their book and they hope it helps some people. And then they're done. And then other people who are building a whole business and using their book and speaking to help build their business to help lots of people out in the world sell coaching or their therapists or whatever. So that's the quick answer to your question, Megan. I'm happy to jump on a call with anybody in the next week or two privately if I can answer it more fully. The metadata, because I see Simon's got a question, but I just want to say the metadata is all the back end stuff, keywords, synopsis, um, links, all the stuff that the, is attached to an ISBN in the US or that's attached to an Amazon page that tells aggregate websites, Barnes and Noble, WH Smith, booksellers.com, all those places where to put your book and how to pick up your book. It's all the coding and all the, the words, the keywords that happen in the back end. Okay, that's very helpful, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Um, so um, they, uh, what, what, we've talked about Amazon. Um, what about the other kind of platforms, the, 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 the other platforms that are out there to promote and, and, and sell our, our, our books? Our, we sell about 80%. I've published 101 books so far. I have 30 in the pipeline. Wow. So far, about 85% of all our books are sold on Amazon. I have a love-hate relationship with Amazon. Um, I, you know, would wake up in the morning and might say, I'm not buying a dang thing from Amazon today. I'm gonna go only local. I'm gonna get and use my feet and walk down the street and only buy local. And then by lunch, I hit that Amazon buy button like three times, right? Love-hate relationship with Amazon. They are the number one book booksellers in most of the world, not the whole world. So there's a couple of things here. I do, not I do not recommend KU, which is the free 
If you're part of Amazon Prime, you can read books for free on KU for nonfiction authors. I've not found that it works. So if you have a book up on KU, I would just take it out. And that's Kindle Unlimited. And so if you're on Kindle Unlimited, you're not allowed to sell off Amazon. You have to stay exclusive to Amazon. So I am getting to your question, Simon, but that's the first, that's the first thing. Amazon sells for us about 85% of books. Having said that, that's 15%. That could be a lot of money you've left on the table, books sold, people you've helped, if you're not after that market. For some fiction authors, I say just stick with Amazon and do KU, do Kindle Unlimited, it's better. For nonfiction authors, it's better to go wide, as they say, and get everywhere. There's all kinds of distributors out there you can use. Um, and so, especially ebook, audiobook, like we put all our audiobooks on Spotify now um, and taking them off exclusive to Audible. And because Spotify is turning into the number one audio book platform in the world right now. Wow, I didn't know that. Um, I, uh... I, I'm an Audible fan, but I do know as a consumer, but I do know that they, it's very expensive, the, the technical hurdles to get you. But I, I do think that there's, there's a lot less competition for adoptee stuff, adoptee memoirs on, on Audible than there is on, on, on Kindle, for example, because it, it, it's a higher barrier, a barrier to entry absolutely it's a it's a high barrier to get through the audible filters and if you don't if you're not david or simon <laughs> i don't know who else here is podcasters you know they don't accept um bad audio so you got to have really good audio to get on audible but you know even though we're moving to spotify they have high barrier too right and we're keeping on audible so we already have when we publish or produce, we have high barrier. Um, I think for most people, being everywhere is better than not. Have have ebook, have a paperback, have an audio book, get it out on Amazon and other distributors. Promote your book. Um, you mentioned about a website. If you're doing a book as your passion project, and you're writing this book and you've put your time and your heart and your soul and some money into this book and you put it out there and you move on to your next passion project, that is okay. Do not beat yourself up if you only sold a hundred or only sold a thousand books, it's okay. I'm a ballroom dancer. I'm never gonna make my money back on ballroom dancing. I'm never gonna go win awards for ballroom dancing. It's okay to do stuff just because you wanna do it, right? Especially in the US, we're supposed to like monetize everything and be successful at everything and go do, do, do. And it's like, who cares? If you just wanna write the book and get the book out and that's enough for you, then that's enough. Having said that, if you want to sell books, you do have to build, what, what else are you doing that's attached to it? Are you a coach? Are you a podcaster? Are you going to have a course? Are you going to do retreats? And then maybe you do need a website to tie it all in. Yeah. So that's, if, if you're just doing a book because you want to sell a book, you can run Amazon ads and sell more books. You can run Facebook ads and sell more books. You don't need a website. If you're selling other things that go along with it, you are going to need a website. So I just want to um, mention a few resources around here. Uh, so a lot, I mentioned this to quite a lot of people and they've not heard of it, but there's a big website called adopteereading.com. So if you're if you're looking to find out what's going on and what people are, and 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 you, you you basically you need to be listed on this thing, right? Adopteereading.com. I didn't know about that. Yeah. yeah. See, there's like um, I only I stumbled across it last September. Uh, there, are, I think there's about a thousand authors on there, something like that. Seven hundred, a thousand authors. Doctorreading.com. Um, I also want to mention a 
uh, kind of like, so you can see what other people are doing. A Facebook group called Adoptee Influencers. Um, have a have a look at that. Uh, and another one, there's uh, there's there's this. Uh, if you're looking for like, okay, give give me the give me the tactics, give me the tactics. Um, there's a book called A Thousand. I think it's called A Thousand and One Ways to Market Your Books by a guy called John Creamer. Is that any good? Are the be are the better books than that or? Can you come across that? So Amazon changes all the time. There are some key things that never change. Go speak. Uh, some I, I have an author who sold 20,000 books going to farmers markets. I don't know what it's called in the UK, but you know, where you go. Farmers and, markets. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Um, uh, 20,000 books, just taking his book and going to like local trade fairs and farmers markets and whatnot. That's a lot of books for anybody, 20,000 books. There are some things that don't change, but that um, perspective, that approach may not be for everybody, right? And so you got to find the ways that work for you. So I don't know that particular book. I've heard of it. Um, there's a lot of books out there. You find the pieces that work for you and then stick with them. Yeah. Find the things that work for you and stick with it. Do you want a podcast? Do you want to speak? Do you want to blog? Do you want to promote? Do you want to do an email newsletter? Do you want to get on social? Choose one and start there. Don't try to do, do it all. Choose one thing and get good at it and find your people, find your niche. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Like you can, you can, it's one of those things, isn't it? You can go broad or you can go narrow, broad, narrow, broad, narrow, broad, narrow. Right, right, right. It's like, um, so I'm going to put links up to these little resources. So uh, this, this um, webinar obviously is being recorded. I'm going to upload the video to, uh, to my YouTube channel and email everybody out that registered. Um, uh, and then under, uh, in that, in the, in the blurb, um underneath the the youtube i'll put the links to a thousand and one ways to market your books the adoptee influencers thing the adopteereading.com as well um and and uh, obviously a link into uh, michelle's My email sorry? If anyone wants to connect sorry do you want well, you, you can put my email in if anyone wants okay, to connect. right I'll, I'll do that as well my yeah. website or whatever um, so I, I i guess we kind of we we jumped from the social stuff yeah. So in the in-person stuff. I, I know a lot of people. Um, so there's a guy called uh, Ed Diganji uh, who came on the podcast. He's done a lot through libraries, right? Yeah. Libraries and booksellers, you know, uh, book, local book retailers. And he's really gone to town and anybody that he can get to talk to locally. So you can do this big global thing on Amazon and then you can dive down and do what you're doing locally. Now that you know, and 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 book book read local book readings. You yep. can do you know, and obviously you can do readings in person, and you can do readings online. You can you can have an event. You can use you know, I use Eventbrite right to to yep. publish all this thing. You can do an Eventbrite. You can do an event, and that's a free platform to use. If you and, and uh, yeah, it's a free platform to use to to uh, event right. So there's. I want to go that. back. I want to. I want to like poke the bear here for a minute, Simon, because you said go wide, go narrow, go wide, no, go narrow, and um, your. But I would say you know your strength is better at talking, and so you're speaking, podcasting. And even though you keep going to write your book, which I can help you with, by the way, but if you decide to do it, you are not going that direction. So I would just come back to what you were saying about disagreeing with me a little bit, saying, but I think you are sticking to your strengths. And that's what I'm saying. Choose blogging, choose podcasting, choose speaking, go online, go local, kind of find your strength there is i think what i was saying more and don't try to do it all find find the thing that you do best and start there because i think that's why you're successful too simon is you're you're good at what you do and and behind the scenes i'm I, i've got a army of freelancers helping me do stuff yeah you know, like 
I don't do all the research. I do a, I do a second pass of the research, but the first pass is all done by other uh, other people. Um, yeah. I, I use I use Upwork dot dot com, you know, um, and 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 I I invite. I, I invite a lot of people to come on the podcast. I have a lot of conversations. I have a lot going on. It's you it, do. It, 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 it's full on. And at, sooner or later, you know, like on Wednesday, I had a huge day, right? So I've been going two, two years, uh, just over two years now, and I had 500, 500 uh, downloads in one day. But given I've only had 48,000 downloads in two years, 500 in one day and I thought finally right we're going to skyrocket but this is it and then uh then Thursday <laughs> it went back down to normal again you know like it, it, it's the passion and what caused that so this is don't an know. interesting don't question know. what caused the jump I don't know did somebody retweet you that you don't know about uh, I find Twitter pretty pointless. Actually. Well, I do. I do. Like, Did somebody promote you? That I don't. You don't... Know. I'm seeing. Uh, here's a tip because I know we're. You probably got some more questions, but here's a tip: make sure you have a Google alert out for yourself, your name, your book title, and so forth. Um, da Darren, um, it wasn't one episode. Um, it was 500 across the whole malarkey. Um, the whole, sorry, the whole, the, the whole channel. So that was the thing. That's the thing I looked at first. Was it? Was it the? Was it the podcast? Was it the episode that I just landed, that I released, and suddenly that was powerful? But it, it wasn't. It, it was five hundred across the, um, across the thing. And I I use Simplecast for for podcasting, and I use the the cheap version. Um, the next version gives me more data, but how I'm gonna, how would I action that particular data? I don't know. I and at this point, I'm not trying to monetize anything other than speaking. I get paid. I get every now and again a speaking gig comes along, right? Um, and um, so uh, that's kind of what I'm focusing on in terms of my my monetization. But as I tell everybody, I, I'm I'm. I'm 55, 56 now. I'm getting my income comes from my pension and and the the, the two rental properties that we have. So I don't monetize the I don't monetize the podcast. I haven't written a book to monetize it here. But yeah, I am staying. I am I am playing to my strengths. You know, yeah. if, if you like going out and meeting new people, then go out and meet new people and talk 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 to them about your book. Go to farmers markets. Go to the library. Go to the bookstore. Contact the schools. Da, 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 da. Um, and, Absolutely. yeah and that's the that's the things um but yeah those so what have we not really oh what have we not touched on they we're not touched on the kind of like adoptive parent stuff like there's and uh you know the speaking gigs one of the places that i get speaking gigs is from the the people in each state who support resource parents, right? So, and and, and I I spend a lot of time trying to um, open doors there. So that's when I did this I did this New Mexico this talk in New Mexico at one o'clock in the morning UK time because that's six o'clock Mountain time, right? Um, so there's 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 there is a there's a website. Um, I'm going to put that in the links, and it 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 links it. The the data isn't 100 percent up to date, but um, it's a good starting point. There's uh, it, it lists all the foster and adoptive heads of department across all the states of the of the US. Um, so that's that's one way to go. And then obviously you've got adoption agencies in your state. Right. So adoption agencies in your state make if you want to do this, if you want to do the if that's your audience, if you want to re, like who's already got your audience. This is an old this is what they also right. always say. Isn't it? Who's 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 already collected your audience that you can help partner with who can that you can partner with. So adoption agencies 
have a load of adoptive parents on their books. So contact them um, and ask them what, find out what they want, right? Find out what they want. Don't go in and saying, will you help? I want to, will you tell your parents about my book? That's not going to work. You've got to do it completely other round. It's what, what's in it for them. This the old thing, you're going to, one of the first business books I ever read 20 years ago was people, uh, people only listen to one radio station W double I F M. What's in it for me? Yeah. Um, another thing you can think about along these same lines is it's actually pretty easy. It may feel overwhelming, but it's actually pretty easy to do a special print run of 250 books or 500 books or a thousand books and have someone sponsor that print run. So if you have a specific nonprofit or a specific agency or a fundraiser that your book works with, that could work with, there could be a partnership or a match there, they could sponsor the book and you can put their logo on the back of the book and a chapter that they've written inside the book, those kinds of things, pretty easy to do that. And um, that's another way to get your book out to agencies and people that might help co-sponsor yeah that was mine that's what i used to do sponsored educational publishing yeah. and i I've, I've tried that for the for the monetization of the adoption work um and it, it's a it's a tough it's a tough it's, one because i'm trying to get the right partner you just have to find the right partner yeah i'm yeah the right it's got to be the right it's got to be the yeah. right partner um and um yeah, I, I haven't got. We have an author that uh, partnered with Samsung and her book, they partnered with her book, but she's huge on social. She has like a million TikTok followers or something. And uh, so slightly different audience, business audience, but it can work if you have the right partner. Yeah. Um, what about things that we can do actually on Amazon, Amazon itself, like getting more reviews and does that? Okay, so reviews are the number one way to sell books. If you don't have reviews, you won't sell books. Um, if you have reviews and you're still not selling books, then it's your book cover, probably. Just I'm just gonna say it probably is your cover. If you have reviews and you're not selling. Um, we find 10 to 12 reviews is the bare minimum you need to get any traction on Amazon. Once you're over 75 reviews, they will start showing your book with people who've read this book have also read this book. We see you're interested in this book. You may be interested in this other book. Your book will start showing up. We're finding after about 75 reviews. You're not allowed to ask for five-star reviews. Um, you're not allowed to use Amazon's logo anywhere ever, even if you screenshot that you made it to bestseller or got an amazing review, do not use their logo. Um, you are allowed to ask for reviews. If Amazon can figure out through some weird algorithm in the back end that it's your mother, they or your sister or your best friend, they will not allow that review. They actually have an algorithm that filters out reviews that they think are your friends and family. So there, you can pay like $100, $200 to get reviews legitimately to go on a review tour and get reviews. Um, Goodreads is a great place to get reviews. Amazon does not allow reviews from anyone who has not spent at least $50 a year with them. Most of us do, but there are people who don't like Amazon. If you continually buy cookbooks and crime th thrillers and don't leave reviews, and then suddenly you're trying to leave a review on an adoptive book, Amazon's probably going to say, no, it's not a legit review. So if you have people leaving reviews who leave reviews for nonfiction and yours is nonfiction, it'll probably go through. 
So it is not easy to get reviews. Number one way to get reviews is to have a good book, have a good book cover, have a good book title, and then keep asking for reviews. Ask anybody, ask everybody, put it on social, put it out to your email list. Do ask your friends and family. It may or may not go through. And if it doesn't go through, don't panic. It's just Amazon's algorithm. Yeah. So you mentioned good read, uh, Goodreads. What, um, what other, what, what other um, websites should people be looking at? I mean, I kind of, yeah. Those are the two big ones that matter. Those are the two big ones that matter the most. Um, I don't know WH Smith. They're, they're still in the UK, right? They're still in the UK. They they only they're only still going because they 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 make money out of the travel. This is a, just a, a silly. Okay. Yeah. They they have they have um, news agents at airports and uh, uh, and train stations. And the reason that they make they're still going is you can't just buy one pen, right? So if you go to like if I go to York Station and I'm going to London, it, I need a pen, right? I need and, and I've got a pen. I need a pen. You can't just buy one, and it, and it was ten p like it was in the old days. You right, buy right, three, right. right. So they right. get you by this distress purchase. Yeah. I don't know why okay. I'm sharing this with you. It's just a, a well. I was going to say. There are plenty of other places to leave reviews, Barnes and Noble, websites, wherever they bought their book. Um, all of that matters, it all matters, but the number one place is Amazon, number two is Goodreads. That makes, again, it's the 80-20 rule for those of you that know about that. You know, if you can get 80% of your reviews on Amazon, 20% on Goodreads, the other 0% almost doesn't matter. <laughs> What about doing a promotion to get more to get more reviews to 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 then hopefully? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. If you can spend, you can do a review tour, and we host those. Um, the the cheapest, and and I don't do it, but I work with partners who do it. You know, hundred U.S. dollars, two hundred U.S. dollars. You might get five, 10 reviews. It's a good way to get started. It depends again, how much money you wanna put um, into your book. We have also spent up to $20,000 to do a big full blown PR um, promotion for somebody. And we haven't found that any more of that really works. So I would not recommend you do that. I think promotion under $1,000 still, still works pretty well to get your book up and out. Again, if you're using your book to sell a coaching package and you spend $1,000 and you sell a $3,000 coaching package because one person bought your book, you're ahead. You yeah. got to think about what your goal is overall. What's the big umbrella here? And keep your book as part of that big umbrella marketing package. If you just want to put your book out and you've got an extra 200 bucks to put towards marketing and you don't really have a business, then you get to decide if that's what you want to do. Any, do you want to um, uh, unmute yourself and ask your question? I'm just curious. Um, somebody else had touched on here about being writing about adoption or being an adoptee. And I know earlier in the conversation, Michelle, you had mentioned about how your daughter is an adoptee. So that's not who she is. I don't want to misquote you, but um, yeah, yeah. like that your whole life is not adopt. You, you're as an adoptee, you're more than adoption. You have your own story and you have your own journey. Do you feel um, that by generalizing that our writing is an adoptee memoir or somehow adoptee related, that that would sort of minimize the audience um, because the story that I have and the story that another adoptee has, we're both adoptees, but much of my life may or may not have to do with specifically my adoption. So would it be more beneficial and more, um, would there be more exposure if you were to treat it as some sort of just generic memoir or a trauma memoir or sort of like, what, do you narrow yourself by specifically 
putting yourself in an adoptee memoir niche? Yeah, I totally understand your question. Um, love the question. And I don't know yet. So I think, again, it's part of this big conversation we've been having for the last hour. What is your message? Who do you want to talk to? What's in your heart? Do you only want to talk to adoptee uh, people in the adoptive triad? Do you only want to talk to other people who've been adopted? Like what's in your heart? What's in your message? Well, I personally feel like me as an adoptee who has read other um, adoptee memoirs, when I'm specifically look specifically looking for that, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those keywords and I'm looking for those um, reviews. Right. However, I do feel like there is an overall consensus. I mean, I guess I shouldn't really be generalizing, but I'm going to, <laughs> that the perspective of an adoptee and their experience is not wanted to be heard by Gen Pop. So the general public um, wants to, it's not fair of me to, again, it's not fair of me to generalize this, but the general public does not want to hear about your destroyed life story growing up as an adoptee because the general public wants to know that there are adoptee stories where there are families coming in and adopting children um, and that there's this lovely Cinderella story. But I would think that if I were to do a writing about my life and, and um, specifically how my life relates to adoption, I would of course want other adoptees to read that. But I think more important than that, I would like to find a way to normalize an acceptance of such that there's not always a Cinderella story so that there be more uh, aware, I don't know what I'm trying to, so that more people could be aware that like what, what we're going through is not just in his story. Right. It's not just, um, you know, Nicole Chung's story. Like it's, it's like, there's, there's a very common thread when you join these adoptee groups. Um, and I feel like we're just in this echo chamber of like an adoptee relating to another adoptee that's reading the adoptee book, that's reading another adoptee memoir. And we're all agreeing with each other because we have a shared experience. But what about like how to get the general public to understand that it's not just one bad story that they're to, so I guess it would be more targeted targeted toward um like I said gen pop um but that's kind of like a sneaky way <laughs> like I want you to read it you're not an adoptee but I want you to understand about the adoptee world but I don't want you to not buy the book or not give it a try because I've labeled it as an adoptee memoir Right. So you write a good book. You write a really good book. So just to be clear, my daughter does not have a Cinderella story. I'm trying to help her understand that, right? So, and I understand that you don't have a Cinderella story or, you know, I don't know, maybe you do now, but you've been through some stuff and that's the story you want to tell. That's the story you want to tell. And I think you answered your own question by saying other adoptees are going to understand this, but I want to get to Gen Pop. You said that. You said, I want everybody to read this story. So you got to write a really good story that brings in people who don't understand that world. Yes, yeah, Simon. May I, may I interject? I think, um, yeah, exactly. I think you answered your own question. And I think I'm an adoptee and I think, that's the reason why I wrote my book, because I feel like I feel like there needs to be more stories out there, you know, that it's not a Cinderella story and everyone has their own experience. And I think we need to hear more about that. You know, you mentioned Nicole Chung's book and I, I, I did read that book and um, I, I, I thought it was I thought it was good, but I felt like it was just like a um, kind of a, a pretty picture. You know, I don't know. I, I just felt like. Um, I just felt like um, adoptee, a lot of adoptees have um, just different stories. And um, I think we need to elaborate on that more. So if you need motivation, if you need inspiration to write your story, then go for it because I think other adoptees need to hear it. So can we just jump to Darren's question about, so Darren's asking, um, 
sorry to cut you off. I just I'm conscious of time. Um, for self publishing, what ballpark range of money does one need to to publish and promote a book? Yeah, I just uh, threw it in chat because I wasn't sure right. we'd have time. Through us, through my company, without editing is twenty five hundred. Editing is the big thing that costs all the money right now. Um, editing is number one. Then you want to make a get a really good cover, and then you want all the research on the back end around the metadata. So that just gives you a general idea. And editing is where you're going to spend most of the money, either wherever you get that. And to go back to the other question, sorry, I didn't see the names of the people that that were chatting about that. I would say write the book that you want to write. Write the book that meets the aim that you want to deliver. Think about what you want the book to do and then write that book. Write the yeah. book. So I haven't written a book because I want to, I prefer talking to people than writing. I, I, writing is a solo activity and I get my buzz out of community having conversations like this. So, but it took me a while to realize that, right? And did I think about that? Did I really think about that? No, but I, I kept on started writing my book and ages and ages. And then like after a month, I was thinking, well, I'm not getting anywhere. And then I stepped back from it and thought, right, no, okay, forget about the book. Like, I, I'm, I, I guess in a certain way, I'm, um, I'm gathering. One of my ideas about the podcast was to create the audience that are gonna then buy the book was kind of one of the reasons that I was thinking of doing it. But I still haven't done that yet. I'm still in, in, enjoying it more this way. And um, on that point, uh, Michelle Smreckin did, a, as mentioned, a podcast tour. So I, I've I've got um, th there is a uh, in the in in the resources when this video goes live. I'll also put a link to there's a uh, there's a website that does the top seventy adoption podcasts. Um, and so you can that some of them are for adoptive parents, some of them are from adoptees. If you're going for that market, then you can have a look through that um, and, um, uh, and 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 contact those those podcasts. I you know like I often recommend people for podcasts as well. Um, so I can, you know I can do that can do that too. Um, so it's just ten past the hour. Any any last questions or thoughts i have one simon yeah go for it uh this is doug uh yeah. keywords are very important to selling the books on adoption something that we'd all have in common uh what uh, what keywords would be recommended to use uh when you're selling your book on amazon or smashwords as far as that goes what would you recommend there must be at least 10 common ones. Yeah, so uh, we do, um, I've not actually published, uh, actually I published an adoption book at the end of last year. We look at keywords every month. So you can go into Google and see what's trending. You know, if you start typing adoption, underneath will come up all the keywords that are trending. We actually have a software tool that we spend money on that helps scrape keywords and what's going on in keywords. Um, I would think things like, you know, not politically correct words like orphan and um, abandoned children and those kinds of things might still be on the fringes of good keywords because other authors may not use them. But if you go into Google and start typing, related keywords will come up. Um, So the short answer is I don't know, because we look at it for every book based on every book. But I would put in adoption, adoption in the US, what happens to adopted kids, are adopted children happy, all those kinds of things and see what comes up in Google right now that's trending. So there are people that make a living just out of keyword research. There are tools yeah, there that do are. just for keyword research. That's why we so, spend money on a software. So do, do some do some googling around it and 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 try some different things out. Uh, 
it's one of those uh, where there's the simple way, like Michelle's making, and then there's all those people that make it out like it's really, really complicated. And they're only doing that. They're, they're doing that, well, to a certain extent, to sell you something. We're so, all trying to sell something, right? So we're all, we're, we're all, we're all trying to say something, but there's the smokes and mirrors around it as, as like michelle gave you the the way that you can do the it easy way yeah the easy, easy way and um, so yeah um and um I, I just wanted to thank you for uh thank you everybody for coming along to this and thank you michelle for sharing your uh your your uh, expertise in this area um and um yeah thank yeah you. it's um it's not always easy for me to be in this community because I have my own wounding around the whole adoption triad piece, right? And so just like all of you, I'm sometimes re-triggered by hearing these stories. And my daughter, you know, when I adopted her 19 years ago, I had rosy glasses, right? And it has not been the easiest for either of us. And so I just really appreciate you welcoming me in Simon to have these conversations and appreciate you and appreciate having a safe place to come be me as an adoptive mom where I don't always feel safe showing up so thank you I'm curious Michelle would you be willing or I guess I should be asking both of you Michelle and Simon would you be willing to do another one another um you know zoom where we could maybe discuss when you write a memoir and being mindful of the people who are in your life and exposing because what is your story is also theirs so if your daughter were to write a story and she were to re reveal some strong emotions um you as an adoptive mother specifically um like what that would do to you or what right we have right and what our our part is in telling a story is that something the two of you might entertain in the future well, I will. I've led lots of people through that process, and I can give you the 30-second synopsis, which is write it all down. It does not mean it's going to get published. Write it, write from your heart, because you can edit it later, and you want to get it all out because it will help your internal processing to write it if you want to write it. And for the record, my daughter and I have a really good relationship. I just want to put that out there, but it has not been easy for either of us to get to that place. So I'm in the middle of it too, but just from a different, a totally different perspective. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely look at, um, there's some great questions that come up on here. I, I thought today, like I was going to focus purely on the kind of the marketing side for people that have already written books. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'll do no. We'll, we'll do another if if when if uh, we'll do another one uh, for 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 wannabe authors and and we'll look at uh, adopt uh, in the adoption space or adoptees who want to write books and um, yeah we'll, we'll we'll do that definitely yeah well as, as long as because I don't know anything about this right so as long if if Michelle's up for it then I'm I, in yeah. yeah thank you Michelle can I ask you are you interested in in um, books by um, other adoptees, like their experiences, learning about their experiences. So you can, does it give you a better understanding about your daughter reading about other adoptees' stories? Does that interest you? I'm, I'm just trying to. So um, it's actually, even though I have done a tremendous amount of work, it's pretty triggering for me personally. In a I can't way. go back. I can't go back and redo. I can't go back, right? So I work on, so I, that may not be the answer that you were hoping for. My daughter and I are working on our relationship and that's all I can do. Yeah, and I don't, I, I'm, a, I'm a change from my own. I'm a yeah. change from my own adopted mom. It's very complicated. Yes, very I complicated. understand. And, and yeah. we work on the relationship with her adopt, with her birth mother and she does not want to invite her birth mother to her wedding and I think she should. And, you know, she's, I mean, it's complicated. Yeah, that's a whole nother story, I feel <laughs> like. It's it's complicated, right? And yes. 
Well, I'd love to talk to you more about this outside of this. If, if yeah. um, you can leave your contact information. Sure. Is that all right, Simon? If I of course, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole point is 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 uh, communication, sharing, helping one another. Yeah. I'll um, stick it in. Yeah, I have all my own stuff around all of this, right? So. I'm and you you said you guys said that you offer um personal or um one-on-one -on -one about or feedback about books we're writing or or advice or um that you can give or do you charge well i so i am running a business right i do charge mm -hmm. but i do offer 30 minute free consults with no sales um mm -hmm. like i'm not i don't go out i'm gonna put my my thing in here my book okay meeting. great i don't um like it's not a 30 minute i'm going to sell you something right yeah just mm -hmm. 30 minutes we'll show up we'll talk i'll give you some advice and then if we're going to do something later we'll do something later but okay great thank you there. michelle thank you. me on i was i was thinking about the book and um uh, uh, uh she's yeah she helped me uh, on thinking about she encouraged me to think about what's the reason for doing the book so what what next? Yeah. And when I didn't, and then I thought about that, what the next what next one? There wasn't a what next, and and it was it wasn't appropriate for me, right? That to to um, to 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 do to write a book. So I think no, well, just double down on the podcast. So yeah, think about why you're doing it, what you want it to do, and who your audience is, and stay stay true to yourself. It's an internal job. This this is about what 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 we want to do as individuals on this planet you know i heard somebody i was talking to a, an adoptee this week and he said if you're if you've got an imposter syndrome you're probably trying to do something that you don't want to do you're probably being an imposter so if you're not sure about what it is like d you know don't try and be anybody else just try and be you people want a genuine um uh, you know a, a, People want to write from honest, genuine, straightforward people. They want to listen, re listen to genuine, straightforward people, don't they? You know, that's, we 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 don't want to follow hypocrites. We're not trying. We don't want. We're not interested in pretense. People straight see straight through it. Thank you very much, listeners, and um, we'll we'll do this uh, we'll do this again in uh, a, a couple of months, hopefully. So, yeah. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you Fred. very much. This has been very very valuable information. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.